Imagine I asked you to multiply two numbers. Easy peasy, huh? Today we are going to do just that, but with a Russian flavor. This method is called Russian peasant multiplication, the name which my conscience quite disagrees with for the classism it implies. I came across a video by number file, link in the description, where Johnny Ball talks about this method quite elegantly. However, the video doesn't quite go into the detail for why this method works. And we, the inquisitive minds, are today going to explore the multiplication method flavored with classism. And trust me, it's not as bad as its name. Starting off, let us find the product of two numbers, 9 and 6, but using the Russian peasant system. Let me place 9 in the first column and 6 in the second column. Now, with the first column on successive rows, I'm going to write the number in the upper row divided by 2 and round it off to the lower value, that is applying a floor function. Here, in this case, 9 divided by 2 is 4.5. Apply the floor function to that and we get 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2 and 2 divided by 2 is 1. We stop once we reach the number 1. In the second column, I do the almost opposite thing. I multiply each row by 2 successively as I move down. So 6 doubled is 12, which doubled is 24 and that doubled is 48. Now, I eliminate all the rows that have even numbers in the first column. So there goes the row of 4 and the row of 2. Now, we add the remaining row values of the second column. Here, it is 6 plus 48, which is equal to, ta-da, 54. And that is exactly what's equal to 9 times 6. You're welcome to do this with any two positive numbers, and you're guaranteed to get the correct answer. Sounds spooky, huh? Some fellow inquisitive minds might be arguing, however, that this seems not as efficient method for a simple process like multiplication. The main aim of this video, however, is not to find the most efficient method for multiplying two numbers. It is rather to appreciate why this weird method of halving, rounding off, and doubling the numbers produces accurate result every time. Not to mention that this method seems to have been used at some point in computers while multiplying numbers to reduce the storage used. Back to the battleground. We'll have to start with binary numbers. I would ask even those who are familiar with binary numbers to stick by, because what will happen in a few minutes will be the backbone of Russian multiplication method. Binary numbers basically are the numbers with only two digits, 0 and 1, and they are ordered in such a way that the equivalent number that the combination of 0 and 1 represents in decimal number system is equal to the sum of powers of 2 raised to the nth power, wherever the binary digit or bit is 1 and represents the index of the bit from the right starting from 0. For example, the number 1001 has 1 in the 0th index from the right and 3rd index from the right. So it is equivalent to 2 raised to the power 0 plus 2 raised to the power 3, that is equal to 9. This is how binary numbers are defined. And there is this conversion table for converting from binary number to decimal number system a back and forth that you can easily formulate for conversions. Moving to the crux of the problem. How does multiplication work when you try to work in and out a binary number system? 2 in binary number system is 10 and therefore multiplying any number by 2 in decimal number system is equivalent to multiplying the equivalent binary number by 10. Think how multiplying by 10 just means adding an extra zero at the right of the number. Now multiplying by 4 is then equivalent to multiplying by 100 and therefore adding two zeros to the right. Multiplying by 8 is equivalent to adding three zeros to the right. Seems very easy, right? Now you might ask what is equivalent of multiplying by a number that is not the power of 2. So what is multiplying by 3 equivalent to? Multiplying by 3 can be obtained by multiplying the number by 2 and adding the number itself. 9 into 3, for example, equals 9 into 2 plus 9 into 1. 9 in binary number is 1001 and multiplying by 2 is adding 10 at the end, which is 10010. Add that number to itself, 1001, and the answer is 11011. That in decimal number system is 27. And it is therefore possible to multiply any number in binary just by breaking the number down into power distributions of 2. Say you now multiply 9 and 7. 
Now we can distribute 7 into the powers of 2 and write the multiplication in the form 9 into 4 plus 9 into 2 plus 9 into 1. Multiplying by 4 is adding 2 zeros at the right, multiplying by 2 is adding 1 zero to the right and multiplying by 1 is the number itself. Now you add all the additive components and in decimal that amounts to 63. For 7 into 9 you will break 9 into 8 and 1 and write the product as 7 into 8 plus 7 into 1 and do the easy task of adding zeros and adding the additive components. Isn't that fabulous? Well, well, the interesting question however would be to understand how do we know how to distribute any number into its power of two components without having to go through random heat and trial. Like if somebody randomly asked you to take a number, say 286, and asked you to distribute it in powers of two, how do you do it? Well, that my friends, is where we use the definition of binary numbers. As I already said earlier, the position of 1 and 0 in the binary representation of a decimal number represents the power of 2's that are needed to be added to form that number. Take 9 for example. 9 is 1001 in binary system. What that means is to get 9 from 1001, you need to add 2 to the power 0 and 2 to the power 3. That comes entirely from the positions of 1 while representing the 9 in binary system. So if you are given 286 randomly and asked to distribute it, what you can do is convert it into binary which is 1000111110 and therefore 286 is equal to 2 to the power 8 plus 2 to the power 4 plus 2 to the power 3 plus 2 to the power 2 plus 2 to the power 1. And so if you want to multiply say 7 by 286, what you do is write the additive components is 7 into 2 plus 7 into 2 to the power 2 plus 7 into 2 to the power 3 plus 7 into 2 to the power 4 plus 7 into 2 to the power 8. And multiplying by 2 is adding all 0 at the end of the binary form of 7 and so on. And multiplying by 2 to the power 8 is adding 8 zeros at the end in the binary form of 7 as we talked earlier. And you add all the additive components to get the final product. So multiplication in binary number system works in two steps. One, look at the digits from the right that are in the binary number of the first number. And if it's a one, that'll be a part of additive component to make the number. You then add zeros to the other number according to the position of the additive component and repeat this process for every bit. Two, you add all the additive components formed by adding zeros to the second number and find the sum. That'll be our answer. And this simple process is what has been concealed inside the Russian peasant system. Let's first see what's happening in the first column. When we are taking a number, dividing it by 2 and rounding off to the lower value, what we are essentially doing is in binary system, we're dividing it by 10 and therefore removing the last digit. And in each step of the first column, we are successively trying to remove the last digit. In the second column, we're trying to add one more zero to the end of the second number in each successive step. In our terms, we're trying to form all possible additive components from the second number. But remember, we only added additive components of the second number corresponding to the position of one in the binary representation of the first number. That is when eliminating all the even rows comes into play. Wonder why that might be the case? We want to have additive component to the second number only in places where the first number has a 1. And an interesting thing is to note how all odd numbers have 1 as the last bit. That is because in binary system, all other places except the first place from the right has a place value of 1. Because 2 to the power 0 is 1. All other places are even. That means that all the odd numbers in our first column have the digit 1 in the rightmost position. And therefore, the corresponding additive component of the second number needs to be a part of the product. But now, we add the parts in the second column corresponding to odd row value in the first column and ta-da, it's the answer we needed. Isn't that really, really crazy? And crazy is the fact that people had been using it for ages. That's it for today's video. I'm going to my college this fall. I hope to make juicier videos after I formally start learning math and computer science there. So see you until the next one. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and help this cute little channel grow.